Working in Mocha Pro, you probably already know that it's better to avoid things like shadows, light flickering, moving objects or any other distractions that may confuse the tracking algorithm. The traditional approach is to use garbage masks to isolate those areas and prevent the data from contributing to the solve. But what if I told you that this is not the only way to approach those situations? Let me show you how you can get overall better tracks with just a few clicks. This time-lapse clip is perfect for showing you the inverted mask technique. At first glance, it might seem like there shouldn't be any issues getting a good 3D track. So let's see what result we would get with a completely automated solve. I click on the solve button, and in a few seconds we have our 3D camera solve. Let's analyze our track first and see what can be improved. Clearly, the first thing we notice is that the ground plane is way off and there aren't enough trackers to align it properly. Sure, I can always use scene transforms to align it manually, but that would be eyeballing, which is not ideal. If we look up here, there are quite a lot of trackers in the distance and also in the sky. It's preferable to avoid tracking very distant objects for 3D camera solving, since their subtle movement relative to the camera can diminish tracking accuracy and precision. So unless you are planning to integrate something in a very far distance, there is no reason to include those far areas in the track. Since this clip is sped up, the noticeable movement of the clouds makes the sky completely unsuitable for tracking. Same goes for the water. Some feature points are tracked to the moving white form, which is also not great. There are even a few trackers following the walking people on the shore here. All that motion noise significantly affects the solve, increasing the HP error up to 2 and 2. If I zoom in, you can see that the tracking points are moving noticeably. Also, the focal length seems more likely to be incorrect. Despite all of that, we definitely can make our solve better. For that, we would use masking but not quite in a usual way. Instead of spending time creating and tracking multiple masks to isolate everything that gives us bad data, what I can do instead is draw a shape only around the area that I do want to track. In this case, I draw a shape around the central part of the cliff and do a quick, regular planner track. Moving on to the camera solve tab, I need to make sure that the layer I created is set to mask mode. This is how we would normally exclude area from the track, but not this time. The trick is to head over to the layer properties and enable this invert checkbox. By doing so, we are telling the 3D solver to focus only on the areas within the shape. Everything else will not contribute to the solve. That's it! Let's see if the result would get any better. and immediately we can see what a difference it makes. All feature points are now distributed in an optimal tracking area, ensuring we get the best possible results. Also, the ground plane is way better oriented, so I don't need to align it. If you take a look at the HPX graph, notice that the error has been decreased from 2 and 2 to 0.2. That is incredibly low. The only thing I'll tweak is to set the origin of the scene somewhere on the top of the cliff. Now the scene is ready to be exported to your preferred 3D package or shared with other departments for further work. Identifying what makes a bad self chart is a skill you get better at. Don't let the auto track bring in far features or moving objects like we saw with the sky or sea and use an inverted mat to only track the areas that you want instead of using it as a garbage mat. <laughs> 